don't you just tell like five, 10 minutes about your story? What, what, how do you lead with love and what the inspiration around what you do in the world? Yeah. Do you mind? If you don't mind, I think it's the power of love and how you could change the universe with it, even the CIA of the United States. Can I do that? Thank you. That. Okay, very good. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah. We see things in life, and I love the saying that we see things in life that we think are real. Sometimes they are, and sometimes they're not. But what is very real is that on this planet, the frequency is rising. Up until a few years ago, the majority of our whole population, almost 99%, wanted to join in with the masses. If the masses are doing this, I'm joining in, we'll be right, we'll accomplish something. But more recently, in the last several years, people are realizing that the masses are made up of individuals, the power of one. And that power of one, there's a thousand of you, great. 10,000, even 10. It's synergistic. But the power of one is so powerful. And today, if you do it with love, the results are extraordinary. What do I mean by this? I'd like to give you a couple examples, some very limited on my time. Because uh, Goldie had mentioned about 9-11. 10 days after 9-11, the CIA called me up and said, JP, would you please come in here to our headquarters in Langley? Our people need a little bit of a briefing on how to handle change with love. I trained the CIA on more than one occasion, on management motivation. It's all about love. It's amazing how love changes things. Through managing a company, an agency, or your own family through love, you get better results and less turnover than you could ever imagine, or they would have never brought me in. How did they thank me for this? And they, they got all their top executives in there that I lectured with. My wife could not attend at the time. But the thank you was, we'll bring your wife. This is like a 10 days after 9-11. We'll bring your wife and your little son into the war room that you get to go in, JP. That's our thank you. So my lovely Eloise here went in the war room. This is 10 days after 9-11. I mean, they had conflicts going everywhere. Unbelievable surveillance they have there as a thank you. What was the thank for you for? Was teaching them at that time how to deal with change, how to deal with crisis, with love, how to talk to people, how to reprimand people, how to praise people, but you do it with love. If you do it with love, they're much more active, much more tentative, and when they wake, walk away from a reprimanding, they're happy. You could actually reprimand somebody with love, and they love you for doing it. I don't have the time to go through that right now. I just want to kind of brush over a little bit here, okay? But the frequency is rising. Even though you see a lot of garbage on the news and a lot of unfortunate things happening in our planet, there's more good things happening than there are bad things happening. There are more people getting involved in charitable organizations or doing something for somebody else without one, wanting anything in return than have ever happened before on our planet. Now you may say, that's great, but we used to have 100,000 people, 100 million. Now we have almost 7 billion people on our planet. It's per capita, not how many people. So regardless of all the baloney going on, things are changing. The frequency is changing, and I won't get heavy with this, but I'll go very, very light on it. The frequency is changing. You may notice your own lives and people around you becoming more aware as the years go by. We notice our own children. My last child is smarter than the one before. The last one is smarter. The frequency is rising within the planet, and everybody is part of it. Now, I had heard her mention before she got off, and I know I'm only here for a matter of minutes, how you could change the world also by a loving attitude and looking at sustainability, how a corporation could do it, make a lot of money, and at the same time, change people's lives forever with ecology and sustainability in mind. And the example I'll give you is from one of my companies, Patron Tequila. All of Patron's glass is recycled glass. All of it is. And what we do is there's people out there that go around picking up the bottles in Guadalajara, Mexico, cashing them in for maybe, you know, 20 of them for a penny, whatever. They make a little bit of money. But that little bit of money they make gives them the opportunity because this recycled glass that we buy, we buy over 40 million bottles a year, recycled glass. They make a little bit of money. So they can now buy a shirt or maybe go to an inexpensive restaurant, something they couldn't do before. Well, that shirt seller or that inexpensive restaurant now has more customers. They can now buy maybe a suit 
or go to a nicer place or buy a car. And it goes all the way up the chain. Now, will these people gathering the recycled glass buy Patron tequila? No, absolutely not. They can't afford it. Will the next level up buy Patron tequila? Probably not. In Mexico, you get tequila for three, four bucks a bottle. But will the next level up and the next level up one day become our customers? More than likely. In other words, by being sustainable, there's a way to grow your business and help everybody along the way make themselves some money. Since I'm almost out of time, I only have any minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with a story that reflects everybody that is here. And sometime with the Aston Institute or with your organization, I'll spend a few hours with you guys on how to start businesses with little to no money and include the plan and to give back. But let me end it with a very quick story. In the beginning, God created the earth. Now, if you're an atheist, no problem. Call it the force. But so I don't go back and forth between the force and God. Let's just call it God. God created the planet Earth, and he created a species called an oyster. He said, oyster, you're going to have the most perfect social economic life you could ever imagine. You talk about socialism. Whoa, this is overboard. I'm going to give you clothes and a free house. It's called a shell to live in. You live in the shell. I'm going to put you at the bottom of the ocean to protect you from your enemies. You want to eat? No problem. Open your mouth and food rushes in. You're full, close your mouth. Want to eat some more? Open your mouth. You have food, clothing, shelter, and care, and protection, but you don't go anywhere. Socialism. Then he says, God, <laughs> then God, and then God said, okay, now I'm going to develop a different species. Species, you're called the eagle. God, that's cool, God. What do I do? Where do I where live? Well, eagle, you're going to be a little different. Eagle, you go build your own house. Well, pick a mountaintop, pick the top of a tree. Just go find a place and build a house. God, how do I do it? You figure that one out. You just go do it, okay? Oh, God, how do I eat? Well, you're going to fly around. And we all know that eagles fly through wind, snow, rain sometimes, and sleet, but still are able to feed their young and survive. Very few people are aware of this. The eagle is the most powerful bird in the world. Did you guys know the eagle fails 95% of the time? It's so big and cumbersome that when it comes down on its prey, they feel it and run away. But even though it succeeds only 5% of the time, it's the strongest, strongest bird in the world. It'll fly, it's the only thing in the world that'll fly into a hurricane to write the thermals to have fun. Now, the eagle unlike the oyster, can go anywhere it wants at its own will and change whatever it wants. Now the eagle, and not the oyster, is the emblem of our great country, America. And regardless of who gets elected, I'm going to assure you, you can't mess America up in four years, okay? There's a little con You can't mess it up. I don't care who you vote for. You're not going to mess this up in four years. But it's a little bit like the people in this room. You all want to make something better. And there's no doubt in life, I'm a child of the 60s, okay? I'm a little older than anyone in this room. But in life, the greatest high you will ever get in your life is doing something for somebody else and never asking anything in return. Nothing exceeds that high. And I know a high. I'm a kid of the 60s, okay? <laughs> it's a great, and that's what you guys do. You're all eagles. Bless you. I'm sorry I'm so limited for time. Peace, love, and happiness.